These are the 38 inch 60 size floats from Hobby King mounted to a Hobbyco Hobby Star aircraft. These are really good quality floats. They are made from fiberglass. They come with mounting hardware. They are finished exceptionally well. Um, really, really well, in fact. And they do include a rudder kit. If this is your first float plane conversion, I am going to provide you with a few tips to make it successful. So what's in the box? You get the two floats, a steering cable, a reasonably good uh, manual, a rudder kit, and then the uh, mounting hardware with the, the set of screws. This is the rudder kit that comes with the uh, floats. There are two cable guides for the uh, steering cable. And the kit itself is very sturdy and it has a, a swivel so it can kick back if necessary. A uh, very sturdy unit indeed. Make sure though that if you are going to mount rudders that the back of the floats here does not have wood on the inside. There's only fiberglass there. And if you are going to mount your rudder you should glue a little piece of plywood here so that you have something firm, firm for the uh, screws to bite into. Uh, make sure that the plywood um, is waterproof. You can soak it with CA and that will waterproof it. The included mounting hardware gives you a front strut and a rear strut and also spreader bars. I highly recommend that you add this little one here. Um, that prevents any rearward movement of the float mount during takeoff and landing. Run it from the top of the front strut to the bottom of the rear strut. Without it, um, the whole float mount uh, relies solely on the integrity of your screw mount here and it tends to want to bend the main strut and the rear strut. If you put this on your float mount will last as long as you need it. The 38 inch floats has two hard points on them where there is wood on the inside of the fiberglass so that you can uh, mount the hardware to it. There are only two hard points, okay? Um, they are marked on the floats and there's a little hole drilled in there so that you can see where they are. Do not try to screw the main um, strut to any other part of the float because there's only fiberglass here. There's nothing to screw it onto. If you have to mount it to a different part, it's not going to be that difficult. Take a little piece of plywood and uh, glue it firmly on here with epoxy. You may want to rough it up a little bit so that there's some grip for the epoxy and then you can make your own mount. However, I used the factory mounts and it worked just fine. So these are marked. Look for the little hole there and you'll know where the hard points are. They provide you with four screws of attachment on each point and they have proven to be very very strong and gives a very rigid mount. Because of the included hard points on top of these uh, floats, you have to follow that if you are going to mount it to your aircraft. Therefore, you have to supply a hard point inside the airplane to mount the uh, struts too. All you have to do is to take a nice piece of good hard wood and glue it onto the floor of the aircraft in the position where the float has to go. If you're going to use an aircraft like this, in mine I glued a little wooden plate to the fuselage floor just in front of the F2 former here and another one in the back uh, on the floor just behind the F3 former. So there's a mounting plate glued in there and another mounting plate glued in there. When you mount your floats to your aircraft, make sure that the step on the float is positioned at or slightly behind the center of gravity. If you position the float too far forward, the aircraft will give you a difficult time during takeoff and landing. On my aircraft, the step is positioned approximately a quarter inch behind the center of gravity which is marked up there. The second very important feature about float mounting is that you want the wing incidence angle to be between 0 and 2 degrees positive to the top of the floats. What that means is that the leading edge should be higher than the trailing edge when compared to the top of the float. There are several different guidelines there, but if you stay between 0 degrees and 2 degrees, you'll probably be fine. I tend to mount most of my airplanes with the wing incidence angle at about 2% and takeoff and landing is usually no problem. When choosing floats for your aircraft, make sure that the length of the float is 
approximately 75% of the length of the aircraft when measured from the propeller washer to the hinge line of the rudder. This airplane has a length of 50 inches measured from the rudder to the prop washer and these floats are 38 inches and they seem to work just perfectly. These floats should work fine for any aircraft with a wingspan of approximately 70 inches. When choosing floats for your aircraft, make sure that you have floats that are long enough to extend slightly in front of the prop arc. It adds for significant stability during the takeoff run and prevents nose over. The bottom of the floats are shaped with grooves to provide excellent tracking on the water. These are molded right into the fiberglass. As you can see, the paint job on these floats are, is done in an extremely good way.